Welcome to Talking in Stations. I'm Matt Earl with some friends. Uh, say hello to Sully. Hey, guys. And also Stra Strata. Hello. Okay, we got a big day today. Uh, it's not going to be a long show, though, because we need to get our rest, right, Sully? Yeah, got to get uh, an early night, a nice long lane, because I've got a feeling it's going to be a long one for me tomorrow. If everything goes right, it should be a long one tomorrow. But uh, here we are. This is January 1st, New Year's Day in 2021. The last year, 2020, ended with a huge bang, and that was a giant battle. I guess uh, it's listed here as the big one uh, that was in MTAC 2 between uh, the Imperium defending a keep star and Pappy attacking that keep star. Here's some of the amazing images from Resorian. Put these up in a way that you can see them. Let's talk about this fight and uh, how it started. And well, first let's actually give people scale on this thing. I think uh, some of our calculations were that this fight is the largest fight in EVE Online's history. It actually beats BTAC R that happened in 2004, January 27th. Uh, that was the high watermark for a long time because so many Titans died in that fight. And that was, I believe, 75 Titans were destroyed. Um, yeah. We can look at that. Let's see. So this one eclipses okay. it um, pretty, pretty far. <laughs> it's hard to get our mind around it still because we're kind of tired of it. But this one, we saw how many? 250 Titans die? Yeah. Um, so we're still seeing Titans actually showing up on Zed Kill even after um, now 24 hours after I think it's been a few hours now but we have a couple more Titans appear um, this is just because some players don't have their ESIs linked up and so these things have to be manually uploaded but well, I think we're up to 127 from one side and 128 from the other um, so well over the two, um, 250 mark of just Titans destroyed which is insane to think it was held at 75 and now it is it was almost double that from one side it was only probably another hour or so before we would have hit 150 on each side but it was an immense fight don't worry we'll uh, look at all the pictures in just a minute while we talk about this but now let's just uh, give you an idea of um, each each side in this fight actually uh, took more damage than all of BTAC are uh, if you adjust for inflation and the, the price of Plex and what it is now and all this other stuff, uh, it comes out to about three hundred and three thousand U.S. dollars uh, as far as game time and ISK is is concerned. So essentially, players lost about on both sides three hundred thousand dollars worth of game time and, and play time and ISK. Uh, that is the same number, basically three hundred to three hundred and twenty for BTAC R. So even as far as the most expensive, with the difference in inflation and everything, uh, this was essentially the same scale as BTAC R. It did not have at all the same consequences of that historic battle in 2014. This one was a tie. So 250 Titans died. I believe the overall damage was somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, an actual game money. It was uh, 21 trillion, something like that. Uh, I think it's, uh, let me just double check now, the battle report, which is still being updated, right. is currently just shy of 24 trillion. 24 trillion. So I think that 300,000 number may be revised uh, pretty soon. But this is essentially, if you look at this fight, it was a gargantuan fight, a little bit unexpected. The fight itself wasn't unexpected. The fight in this circumstance was unexpected. And you can see one giant pool of titans fighting another giant pool of titans, essentially, uh, over a keep star there. And uh, again, this was going to happen at some point. It needed to happen for this war to end. I don't think uh, you would have seen um, any kind of victory condition that didn't have uh, the degrading of the opponent's military power so this had to happen in order for there to be a winner and we're at the end of the war in certain respects a lot of territory has been taken uh, the home of the imperium is getting smaller and smaller uh, and they haven't they've kept their powder dry let's say so they're uh, they're still capable of 
fighting back in a strong way as they demonstrated. So it really is the right time for this battle to happen. Nobody knew it was going to happen right at this point. Uh, so Sully, what, what actually did happen? How did this come about? Come about? So um, this started in, uh, well, it started a couple of days ago when Pappy forces reinforced three keep stars. Um, they had reached the level on the iHubs where they could deploy a cyanogemma. So there was cyanogemma's position and they reinforced three keep stars at the same time. Um, or at least with very few minutes between them. So this started in the system of STAC-6, where the first Keepstar timer was coming out. Imperium had reinforced the uh, Sun Jammer already earlier in the day, so there wasn't a jammer active. And whilst uh, Pappy forces were trying to uh, anchor and deploy another Sun Jammer, that's when the Imperium counterattack happened. They brought in two full um, subcapital fleets and was able to do enough damage as well as disruption that they could pause the Sinojammer from anchoring and onlining, in which the Keepstar's repair timer had, uh, would have elapsed before the system would have been safe to jam. Uh, shortly after that, then M2 TAC was the next target, and well, after the fight had quickly finished in STAC-6, there was uh, around 10 Sinos in M2 TAC, both from both sides having multiple Sinos to deploy in. Pappy was deploying in their Titans in preparation for the attack on the Keepstar, as as was the Imperium in uh, preparation for defense. I think it was at that moment, both sides was kind of like, okay, this is where it's going to get as a big brawl. Yeah. So again, three timers. Goons saved the first one, Imperium. Uh, the second one became a huge showdown. The third one was also saved by virtue of the fact that nobody had time to go and attack it. So... Uh, so that is, in some ways, a victory for the Imperium. As far as the strategic victory here, that was accomplished by Pappy because they were able to t to win this battle technically by knocking that for that Keepstar into its next phase, which is its final phase, the final timer, which will happen uh, on Saturday. Um, so it's a do or die on Saturday to defend that thing. But the other two were basically reset they're saved again, so for another day. So it's kind of a yeah. mix, even technically, on who won this fight, right? Yeah, both sides are claiming victory, and mm -hmm. in respect, that is true. Both sides have achieved a massive victory. Um, Imperium was able to su successfully defend two Keepstar timers, as well as deal a massive blow to Pappy forces in terms of 127 Titans. Um, whilst Pappy was able to reinforce the last keep start into armor turning off its services so there um there are possibly clones stuck there as well as now um for the you know, pos potential of the next fight there would be no safe place left at the end as we saw with the anchoring keep stars uh, in uh, FWST and YZ9 those keep stars once they are anchored there are a sort of safe haven for people to anchor and you know log off and tether whereas when they are destroyed, there is nothing left. You are just left with a bunch of Titans in space with nothing around them to safely extract. So they have to be manually extracted. You know, fleets have to come in to remove bubbles and things like that. And and with the um, the last timer, the, the structure timer coming up on Saturday, it's an interesting difference being that if um, if the Pappy forces managed to destroy the Keep Star, the Imperium would not have the ability to safely dock up. So, to some extent, um, if the Imperium decide to fight in this in this way, it's going to be less of a defensive fight where they can retreat easily, um, and more of an aggressive one where where they're kind of stepping out of of a potential comfort zone. So, it there there is a positive from the standpoint of what we've discussed previously in in talking stations public chat, which is that there are a lot of Pappy Titans now locked off in the space um, around this Keep Star um, that would uh, benefit from being resupplied. Um, very operational, but but uh, low supply. And um, it's a question of whether or not Goonswarm decides to try to capitalize on that—that that maybe the um, 
the difficulty. For, <laughs> yeah, they can't log in to to even assess the situation of of what their ships have in them um, or figure out where they are. There's a there's a bit of disarray there. Um, so it's it's a question of whether Goonswarm attempt to keep them there uh, longer or whether or not they decide to cede this this slightly more difficult to defend uh, Keepstar. Yeah. So um, for those that was watching the stream yesterday, I did have my Titan on field, and my Titan is somewhere on this grid. Um, I do believe it is safer than most, but I am unable to figure out how many cap charges I have left, how much fuel I have remaining. Um, there's a lot of factors that in this fight, you know, there was Titans being attacked as downtime was happening. So I believe there is Titans that could even be in low armor, but they are unable to log in and see what state they're in, log in and see what supplies they have, how much ammo, because it is no longer safe to do so. Um, as I mentioned in chat, currently Imperium do have all three Sinojammers anchored. Um, they are, are none online, so we'll have to see um, tomorrow at the beginning of the fight, how that's going to take effect because Pappy will be unable to anchor a Sinojammer whilst these are, in fact, anchored. So there may end up being some form of uh, sub-capital or even a capital fight on these Sinojammers to try and remove them. Um, because that's one fact we saw yesterday is Pappy was able to dictate when resupplies could come in. So they were able to cycle the jammer and get um, the Sinos lit. Imperium did very well with not knowing when Pappy was going to do this. Imperium did so well in figuring out, okay, we're just at the ready. Okay, systems not jammed. Now let's begin to light the Sino, get people in, get things you know replaced, get more Titans in when they didn't have any information about that. Yeah, so there's a, a few things here. One is the armor timers are usually when you see fights like this. So you will see... Uh, you will see people take the armor fight because you still have the safety of being able to dock, being able to tether, uh, and you can extract at any time you want. The The momentum of the fight was um, Imperiums to defuse. They could have said, okay, everybody stop firing, everybody tether up, everybody dock. And that Keepstar, even if it was pushed past armor into its final timer, would have been a safe place for a few days and they could have extracted right away. So they, they could at any time have walked out of that fight. The other forces, Pappy, on the other hand, were not tethered to anything. Well, they were tethered to an Astro House at first, but once they get under that Keepstar, there's nothing uh, giving them invulnerability. So they're pretty much um, there until they decide to leave. But when they try to leave, if they don't have subcap control of the field, they can get trapped pretty badly. And that's when you see a massive loss a massive one-sided loss of Titans. So we didn't see yeah. that happen because Pappy did not leave and neither did the Imperium. They fought it all the way out until the uh, downtime, which is essentially a timeout. And uh, Pappy decided not to come back after that timeout. Um, and they still haven't come back after that timeout. There's no reason for them to come back after that until the next vulnerability cycle, the final timer of that Keepstar, which is probably what they're going to do. So expect a fight on Saturday. As far as dictating the flow of reinforcements coming into the field, you can only do that one of two ways. Well, there's three ways. You can undock, from, you can undock reinforcements from that Keepstar, that's one. Uh, but you can come in through the gate, which is usually camped and locked and uh, Although it wasn't very well locked, this fight, uh, I heard. We'll come back to that. And the third way is to jump things in. Then you're going to want to be able to jump things in because that's what this fight is about. It's about ships that can use their own jump drive to get into this fight, like Titans, because that's what was really at stake here. And that was controlled. That tempo was controlled by Pappy. So everybody had an advantage in this fight, which was great, because that meant that, that they were thinking they were winning this fight, as Elise says. And this is why momentum stayed. First of all, there's enough people on both sides to keep damage at a certain cadence, right? If you start losing DPS, you might start thinking about withdrawing because you, you can't make up for it. And once the numbers be get, lo get lopsided, that cadence gets worse for you uh, because they can destroy one of yours every second, but now you can only destroy one of theirs every third. And the more of yours they destroy, 
the more the less of theirs you can destroy now it's every fifth now it's every sixth and so you really start losing so you might want to extract at that point that didn't happen in this fight uh, because there was just so many reinforcements already in the fight so they duked it out slugged it out and that's what you saw that's why the numbers were 250 titans uh, but very even because they were really changing uh blows very evenly and the only reason it stopped is because there is a, a timeout where the servers have to say, I need a 15 minute break to do some maintenance. So that's what happened there. Now, uh, there's a lot of stuff that happened in this fight that you can't see, and it's not all about Titans, right? There's some subcap action going on. Yeah, someone in chat uh, mentioned that if you look through, so Zorian's pictures are beautiful and they are in high detail and 4K. It's almost like playing Where's Waldo. You can look for the smallest of ships in these pictures somewhere on these grids. Like um, in current stream, I can see there's a revelation there that is looking dwarfed by the Erebus. <laughs> but also to the right underneath the avatar, there is a small subcat wreck with a pod next to it, <laughs> just underneath the front of the avatar. It's I like, see it. I see it right in the middle. There are so, so little uh ships in here and there's such high detail that you really just can and try and see anything Where going can on we, uh, find these pictures if we're interested yeah <laughs> yes let's put that put in, in chat. chat yeah this is Zorian. Zorian. ccp aperture now so he's part of the team there these ships are yeah, very wise moves on ccp's part very wise move for ccp to pick <laughs> up he's a it is beautiful. Uh, he currently has all three of my desktop background slots are his pictures from various fights. So we can see some subcaps in here somewhere. This is a gorgeous fight. Gorgeous stuff here. I mean, that's just... You can see how toasted this uh, avatar is right before it explodes. It's uh, just singed completely. All these little <laughs> lights here are explosions on this giant... Uh, especially, uh, basically, this thing is the size of Manhattan, right? So those explosions are gargantuan explosions. Uh, but you can just see all the hull damage that's been done to this thing before it explodes, and it it does explode in the next slide. Okay, but um, so the the contributions on the subcap level, it was hard to um, let's go back and see the explosion. Yeah, it's a massive, massive uh, explosion. But the uh, the subcaps made a big, big difference in the first Keepstar timer. In this next one, uh, the Keepstar really wasn't the battle anymore. The idea was to take that Keepstar and put it past armor. And once the Titan started applying damage to it, that was just going to happen. Because there's only two ways that doesn't happen. One is the server crashes. And two is those Titans decide to stop firing. Either they leave, they're made to leave, or they just decide to stop firing. So they really started shooting that thing. That thing was uh, probably a damage cap, which means dying as fast as possible. And at that point, um, the only thing that could happen was Imperium had to dissuade that, capital f that super capital fleet from sticking around by attacking it. And that's exactly what they did. A few of the Titans untethered fired their doomsday's device and killed uh, like five titans right off the bat they just volleyed them it's yeah, funny this that is was one time. thing that whilst we were streaming we was we was talking um about how there currently there wasn't anything and then all of a sudden as if um the command was given over their chats it's like okay lock and fire this guy and lock and fire this guy and the coordinate attack was pretty much instantly you just see titan Titan Doomsday just light up the screen, followed uh, very swiftly by a plethora of just Erebus explosions. I believe the first volley was all Erebuses were targeted, and it was just like, okay, there we go. Now this, now they're officially firing their Doomsdays. All right, if you want to watch uh, highlights, we have highlights for you. Talking in stations on YouTube. That is youtube.com slash talking in stations. I'll be showing some highlights of video that we did. We did a 12-hour stream. Uh, Sully and I, Strata helped out, but at least Randolph was there most of the time, so that was great. And uh, uh, we got a lot of highlights about some of the stuff that was going on. Let's see if I can get the... Uh, but this is, I think, pretty much when the firing started. 
th this is actually still the uh, the Pappy fleet shooting the Keepstar, and that's what I meant by once that started, that wasn't going to stop. You do see a massive explosion there. I believe that was... Was that a hell? I don't know what that was. That would be an avatar because of the screen going white. So the good racial part <laughs> is... Uh, that right? The screen, the explosion is related to the Titan. So it, when the screen goes uh, very bright and green and then fades back down into a lime kind of green, you can tell, okay, that's an Erebus that's gone. Um, so it's, there are some cadences on the explosions, things like that. Yeah. So this is uh, when the... Well, this is basically when the uh, Chinese alliances start joining the fight eight hours after it started. Uh, they bolstered the numbers. Where were the Titan numbers when the, when the fight barely started? Um, I think when the fight was just starting, it was still, um, because both sides didn't really plan for this, there wasn't um, like prepped fleets. Titan pilots were just logging in as they got the message and was able to. You know, it wasn't uh, max pinged for. Um, I don't think any group actually officially max pinged it. Um, so it was just kind of pilots were beginning to log in. And I think when we first started, we had about 150 a side, um, maybe a uh, slightly more. Wow. But t towards the end, it just kept scaling up as more and more people. And like, say, when the Chinese time zone logged in for Fraternity, Ranger Regiment, and uh, I for forget who else in the Imperium is on. Uh, over from that side of the world, but you just see them starting to log in and jump in as quite literally they're going, okay, there's a fight going on. Here's our sino. And during one of the times when the jammer was down, they then jumped in. So it's, it's interesting that you, you make that point because, you know, you would assume that Imperium would have taken this fight knowing, you know, well in advance that they might, they were going to do that, but it doesn't sound like that's the case. It sounds like they they got their titans on the keep star, and kind of had a look at the numbers that were on grid and goes, "This is a fight we can take," and they uh, and they took it. So it, I mean, hats off to them for that. It's a you know, it's it's a shot into the dark. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how many of your friends are going to log in to to help out. How many of their friends are going to log in. And uh, yeah, it, it seemed to have worked out for, for them in that case. Yeah, that's the joyous thing with time dilation is uh, outside of it, everything else is just normal. You know, um, 1DQ didn't have tie-dye for a large majority. I think it hit a couple of times. Same with uh, T5Z. Yeah. There's only a few times there actually was tie-dye. So once you're out of the system, you know, refit in, get, make sure you've got all the right stuff. It's perfectly fine and normal. And then it's the jump-ins that, take you into this so the eve time with it being so slow just allows so much more reshipping you know we're on average we're seeing one titan every three minutes die but if you equate that to real uh, time rather than tie dye time it's like one every 13 seconds yeah well i forgot what i was going to say but this this did have a lot of advantages for them to jump in it's a fight they would want to take it's an armor timer on their own keep star those are fights they have said they will take in public and they've said we'll take those um i think they may have modified it to in delve because you don't want to be too stretched out in Aquarius or in period basis so if keep stars have been coming down territory has been taken away but now we're in Delve, and now this is a Keepstar in Delve, and we did see one that was surrounded by um, a jammer, which would not have allowed the Imperium to bring in these big ships. And when they're blocked, there's not much they can do, because they're not going to try to defeat a uh, um, super capital fleet with subcaps. So that uh, the first Keepstar in Delve went down a few days ago. But this time... The jammers weren't in place, they weren't quite ready, or they were taken out, actually, by the Imperium. So there's a little bit of iHub play, a little bit of uh, jammer play going on here. And it worked out that they could get into the system. And at that point, uh, they showed what they've said, that they will fight on a Keepstar in Delve. And here it is. And now we see it. On the other hand, as we've explained, Pappy wants this opportunity because exiling Goonswarm or the Imperium 
is not enough. It's not enough to let them take all this military power with them because it still holds a ton of influence. And this is what the war is about. It's not about these keep stars at all. It's about reducing the influence of the Imperium going into the future so that, uh, from the Pappy perspective, so that the political landscape can change. Because the political landscape for a long time has been locked, and they blame it on the Imperium's size and mass and just being on top for so long, or being one of the top alliances, whether they were on top or not. But again, a fight they said they would take, and they did take it. The question is, that advantage disappears in the next fight. Things get reversed, which is really interesting, because the Imperium managed to get three jammers uh, into the system, but they don't own the iHub, which is really weird. Uh, so they don't technically own the infrastructure rights, but they were able to put down three jammers, and there's only three jammers allowed per system, so they took up all the slots. So they control the flow of who's coming in and who's going. But what they lose is partial safety of tethering and docking and being able to extract, which means that if they take the next fight and the Keepstar is destroyed, which it likely will be if Pappy commits all their titans, then at a certain point, the Keepstar goes boom, and now you have two floating arsenals, and neither one of them has a safety. So you are going to fight, fight, fight until one decides, we're not, this is not going well for us, we should extract and fight another day. And at that point, extraction will be difficult. So the risks for the next fight on Saturday are really high for both sides. Uh, they were high for, I think they were high for Pappy on this last one. They took it. They're more confident. They have more people. Uh, Imperium has been outnumbered most of this war. So for them to, um, to take a fight, they have to see some pretty good conditions, I would think. So, to, so Saturday, very tense. We don't know if the fight will happen. The smart move, in my opinion, is for the Imperium to say, we're going to take the next armor timer because, and we're going to take the one after that and the one after that. And we will always take the armor timer. We're not going to take these chances and lose, you know, half of our arsenal because our keep star blew up underneath us. That's what I think is the smart money, but we don't know what they'll decide. I think they think they're tougher than that and they can slug it out without the help of a, of a keep star. Yeah. And as well, the, with the nature of Eve, there is a safety net. So, Downtime is a safety net. Um, we saw it from the last fight that it was about 13 hours from the beginning. This fight is going to be about the same. It's going to be about 12, 13 hours. So at some point, there will be everyone's offline. So at that point, it was when Pappy decided, okay, we, we're not going to log back in because um, we aren't in a position where we could really stay up for the next 24 hours and fight this out. Because uh, I'm, I dare say that if Pappy did decide to log back in after downtime and regroup and keep going, that it would have resulted in the fight still being ongoing at the moment. Yeah, I think they would still be fighting <laughs> two days later, a day later. So there were some funny moments in here. Uh, do you, what was one of the funniest stuff, things that happened in your eyes? Uh, so... We have some obvious uh, mistakes that was made uh, early on in the fight. There was an Erebus. Um, I believe he was told, uh, oh, he was told to warp in, um, and the overcomes. I believe it was said that he warped to the uh, that that Titan had warped to the broadcast. At which point, the the Keepstar was the primary target and broadcasted. So he warped to the Keepstar instead of <laughs> a designated character. Um, but we, we did see one of us extract, another one get caught. I believe we had a Nyx as well that was able to extract and uh, not die, even though he's in the center of the blob. Not quite sure how that was achieved. But I have to say that there were some good funny moments, but I think the top one, which I think will be for everyone, is just the Pappy Dreads. Yeah. When they oh. walked in close range Dreads to the Titan Brawl, there was a large amount of excitement because close range Dreads that number at that range could have caused significant damage. And then we just see lances appear. Yeah, that was a, let's see if I can find that video. Hmm, I don't have it. 
Um, there's a good video on that. It's just, uh, I'll see if I can dig it out of uh, talking in stations. It'll be here. We're going yeah, through some highlights here. At some point, um, showing the perspective, I think it was a perspective of the dreads warping in specifically. And um, yeah. And with the tie dye, you know, it's it's one of these things that they, um, as, as my understanding, they, they started out of Fortazar and they warped in. Um, and we can assume that goons had eyes on them entering warp from the uh from the Fortazar and therefore had time to to ready themselves and with tie dye as well the deceleration of a capital you know in in the best of times it feels like forever but in this in this uh situation it would have uh, felt like an eternity for these dread pilots just slowing down and um the goons probably had a good minute to line these things up perfectly on them and just uh, pull the trigger. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did get some uh, screenshots of uh, that came through of some of the um, Imperial pilots who were doing that those dreadnought uh, attacks and the lances and stuff. And it was quite interesting to see that they were in the ultra, the super potato mode. You just see them. It's like, oh yeah, aim the launch. I one of my, my favorite moment was that. Um, you, in this kind of a fight, you want to clear as, as much firepower off the enemy's side as possible so that you take less damage. So what they were doing was targeting the weaker of the Titans, and those are NC dots. Sorry, not NC dots, uh, but uh, Erebuses, right? NC dot has a lot of Erebuses because at one point they were the strongest tank. So that's when NC had a lot of um, Erebuses, and they still have them. Uh, so anyway, Erebus is getting knocked off, and then Ragnaroks after that. And then this Leviathan ends up dead for some reason. And you look at it and it was a Chinese owned uh, Leviathan from the Imperium side. And if you look at the kill mail, it was Chinese aggressors like the, uh, oh, I hate the way those two things go together. I didn't mean it that way, but the, you have fraternity, uh, you know, with uh, everybody shooting it. So the point is, you go, you have this discipline of killing the weakest ones first and you you know consolidate your firepower to get the most effect uh, but these guys saw their mortal enemy on the other side and they're like forget that let's let's shoot uh, this leviathan over here and that that is just hilarious it shows you and reinforces there's like you know grudges in this game that supersede the strategy thought that was funny yeah it's, one thing you always get is little feuds you know uh, Brisk Rupal's Ragnarok was targeted fairly on, early on in the fight, I believe. Um, so you will always get those little grudges, but it was quite funny to see, like, oh, we've got all these prime targets and uh, Erebus and Ragnarok that can be mm -hmm. um, shot and killed. Or me, there's that Leviathan. Let me just say that what you're watching here is the Dreadnoughts arrive from test. The blue lights are targeting mechanisms, and you'll see the firepower begin there with uh, Doomsdays. Then you'll see explosions as they light up. And this was really a, a highlight, right? This is a, one of the coolest, most visible things that happened there. With a dread bomb basically just deleted off the field. Yeah. Again, the, the Chinese thing is just an example of feuds in EVE Online. Uh, it's not particular to Japanese. Russians do it to each other all the time. I'm sure uh, Brits and uh, US do it to each other as well. But it was, it was very funny to see that. So one interesting thing to note um, whilst watching this video, there was, in fact, an Imperium Titan that died to an Imperium Lance. I'm not sure if it was at the same time of this oh, video, wow. but I did see a kill mail for an Imperium Ragnarok that died, um, and the final blow was done from the Lance of another Titan. So I'd be interested what? to wonder, and I might have a look later, see if I can correlate the time, see if it was during this bomb, if it was just a mistimed, if it was a, a misfired later on. Mm -hmm. But I did find that question because all of these Lance damp Doomsdays are actually hitting every ship there. Um, and very well done to the Imperium pilots that managed to miss those blue apostles that are very close to that dread bomb. Not one of them got hit. And it's it was enough damage that it would have killed them if they did. So it was very well aimed. Yeah. That is uh, some precision work there. Uh, unfortunately, there was some friendly fire and a Titan went down. It, it was, um, at the time, it was like um, 
you know, while we were watching this, we were we were concerned that, that these these dreads that were coming in were potentially going to tip the balance in terms of the uh, amount of titans that were going down um, in favor of the Pappy forces. And it was uh, quite funny just to see all of our concerns completely wiped straight off uh, yeah. just in seconds. Uh, yeah, so we- it was chatting through. It's like, okay, yeah, this is the capability of doing a large amount of damage. You know, these are close range dreads. There's a, there was a good number of them. I think it was about 50 to 60 dreadnoughts, which is more than enough to cause significant Titan damage. And then it's just like, oh, wait, no, they're dead. Um, uh, very well done to the pilots aiming in that intense tie-dye as well. Um, not easy thing to do. All right, some other funny things that happened in here. There was all kinds of funny things. People getting blown up trying to loot. Uh, there was... Uh, um, what was the other thing? I think Elise got stuck outside of his looting ship and he couldn't get back into it. So there was like uh, yeah. five billion so, in uh, loot. So yeah, a couple of uh, highlights I've got for the loot is uh, there was one faction Titan that died and um, it was a vanquisher. And with Elise on stream, I had a look at the kill. I was like, Elise was in uh, an interceptor looting. So I quite happily pointed out, Elise, an officer damage control dropped for the vanquisher. He then proceeded to attempt to do uh, go and loot it. I believe he saw the damage control in the wreck, but I don't know if he was able to loot it in time because he then got immediately killed by the PDS of the uh, Keepstar, yeah. which was quite funny. And like uh, I said later on in the fight, he actually ejected from his looting ship to steal a Nesta that was ejected from space um, for a Titan to refit because uh, Nestas are allowing him to do that. He then also forgot uh, which interceptor was his on this large grid forgot to bookmark it and uh, was unable <laughs> to find it again uh, with about four and a half, five billion in loot. Yeah, that's funny. I like this uh, comment here by BK. It says, uh, I bet those test dreadnoughts wish they had a handbrake when they were flying into that <laughs> hot zone. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, just, just, just trying to stop in any way possible. It's like, wait, no, I want to go back. I don't want to <laughs> be like, here. No. This is the wrong yeah. place. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So, just as a little side note, if there's any newer players watching this, uh, and you're wanting to get involved in a in a fight like this, theoretically, and make up big, you could theoretically fly an interceptor over here once one of these fights break out, and try to rob a wreck, grave robbing and such, mm-hmm. and. Uh, Make out, make out real big. You could have your own uh, uh, big day. In, in total, uh, for the drops, there was around about two and a half trillion isk dropped. Now, obviously, there are yeah, for the internet pilots, there are a large number of those which will be far too large for your ship. Um, you're talking fuel, capital mods, things like that. But the officer damage control is 10 M3 in volume. Any ship in Eve, there's not a yacht, can actually pick that up. So. Mm. Anyone could have gone and looted at a 15 billion module. And, you know, there's loads of hardeners here. Uh, Pivot hardeners worth 800 mil. Energized adaptives, all sorts. That's um, actually dropping from these ships that have significant value. And, and you want to loot during the battle. You, you need some people to loot during the battle, especially here. Because once the battle's over, you don't want the other side, if they keep the field, to be able to get all that money. But the Imperium kept the field on this one, I would say, because they came back after downtime. Were they able to loot more, you think, than Pappy? So um, about 90 minutes to an hour before downtime, commands were given for pirates to start looting fields. Um, During the stream, I was attempting, I was concerned that I was running out of cap. So I was trying to get close enough to a wreck to loot it. However, some rather cunning pilots had deployed mobile tractor units. (laughs) And so I couldn't get into the blog close enough to loot them. So it was, I was about yeah. 10 kilometers away. Oh, that's but, so funny. Uh, a lot of the Titan pilots um, were instructed to um, load a wreck overview and look at uh, what ships were around them and try and pull in modules and stuff just to help uh, restock ships. You know, a Titan may drop four of its guns when it dies, but that's enough for one dreadnought. Mm-hmm. Um, not everything was looted. Imperium, I, I know for a fact, did manage to get out with a significant amount of loot. But I'm not sure in terms of raw numbers of who got what because there were so many people on grid, so many things trying to get taken. So I know there was a recoup 
um, like recoup and uh, scoop loot command given, but how much actually got um, removed before the grid went down, I don't know. So you're going to be fitting a tractor uh, beam to your next uh, Titan, right? So um, I do have a spare high slot on the Komodo. Yeah, but I don't know whether I'm going to fit a tractor beam on it. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the idea is is the Titans. They're these enormous ships, right? Again, the size of Manhattan. Uh, so to salvage them, would you need a big ship for that? Uh, you need a lot of room, a lot of cargo to to salvage it properly. But the modules are all the same size, whether they're for a big ship or a small ship. So those are the ones that you would grab. Yeah, you well, can, you the can guns grab are the, different sizes. But the, uh, the captain modules, as Sully was saying, are, are quite large. You won't be able to You're grab right. them in anything yeah. other than a hauler. And, um, uh, but, so you get the small stuff. Yeah, but not yeah. everything is a capital module. The guns are. What else yeah, is the, the guns? So the there's guns. Capitor, at- Capital extenders, the plates, and like the utility ones, you know, network sensor array, uh, capital newts. So which the ones are, that... the, are the normal size? So the normal ones you want to look for are the hardeners, um, so armor hardeners, shield hardeners, and the damage controls. Those are the three groups that you want to really and focus the, and on. And the damage mods, if they have any fitted. Yes. Uh, uh, like damage amplification yeah. mods. Yeah, damage application, um, damage upgrades, weapon upgrades kind of thing. So tracking enhancers, computers, that kind of stuff. Oh, More yes. often than not, in this fight, I will be very surprised if any of them fit. However, um, many Titans, including my own, do carry a refit. So I actually have about 5 billion in my Titan of mods that aren't even equipped because it goes with the Titan everywhere it lives. So if I need to change out at some point, I can. So in this fight, Sully, did did you guys start out with short range guns fitted, and then you guys fit up long range guns? Is that kind of how it goes? Or um, I generally have short range guns fit when I'm docked. Uh, before we jump in, we um, as a type pilot, the same with dreads and things. You you find out what's needed. You know, short range, long range, uh, lance, single um, for the doomsdays, and that's where the commands given notes in the MOTD chat of what you need. You know, max tank means right okay you need both your shield and armor tank on otherwise i'd normally only have my armor tank um long range guns so you need your beams equipped so a lot of the information is done before we jump in so i didn't carry my uh short range guns into the fight because uh they take up about between four and twenty thousand m3 so i took them out and i filled up on something else like i i believe i filled up on cap charges because knowing this is going to be a long fight so you made a comment about a fellow pilot running out of fuel during the fight, thinking because he thought he would only need to doomsday uh, 10 times. Yeah, uh, so there was a, a Titan pilot I was talking to. He did, in fact, doomsday so much that he ran out of fuel. He brought in um, 500,000 units of isotopes and doomsday and realized he didn't have enough to jump out. <laughs> he only had enough... He, didn't have enough to doomsday or jump, so it was like, oh. He then walked to the fort and was able to get a resupply um, for him to get enough uh, isotopes so he could jump out. He, in fact, did jump out, restock, came in with one and a half million, and then jumped back into the fight. But um, a lot of ships, um, especially on the grid, were running out of uh, the essentials, you know, strontium for dreadnoughts and faxes and cap charges. So we've seen it today, a lot of capitals logging in in m2 tech um which the commands have all been given for pappy sides don't log in unless told there was a jokester now, that tried to trick uh test right by uh horde yeah horde. so a horde spy did get burnt someone um very very early on in the day um pinged out you know everyone log in if you're in m2 tech everyone log in with this in the escape it was quickly shot down and it, uh, as we in trial and he was removed from Horde. The very interesting part of that is it it didn't actually work because I I think everyone that was in the fight was asleep because of the fact that it was on for so long. Um, but yeah, there's so many pilots in there that had run out of uh, faxes that I know especially had run out of cap charges and strong. So pilots have been exactly. logging in throughout the day dying because... Uh, when I covered one of them and asked, he said he needs to be in a fully stocked ship for tonight uh, for the next presidential fight. 
and where has he would be in a ship already on grid. The problem is he's near enough not going to be as useful as a new ship there. Yeah, yeah, we can see on the stream the ping that was sent out to Horde that was like very that. quickly dismissed. I like that answer. Nope, that's bait. I think that comes from Mad Max. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, yeah. So, nobody was awake to do that. If this guy waited 12 hours, he might have tricked a few. And I think it's very interesting that there are some people who are just saying, yeah, I'm logging in to get blown up so I can get into a different ship. And uh, so it may look like, oh, these idiots, what are they doing? But a lot of them are very purposeful in what they're, what the, what decisions they're making. So yeah, I uh, the initial ones I thought was, oh, they're pilots that just wanted, you know, because um, some people, some people in the game only have um, one character, so one capital pilot is their main. So if they're unable to log in, then that's their game day done. They don't play you for today, and with it being uh, event holiday as well people kind of wanted to be online and playing. So they would just accept the loss. You know, it, I think the ship in question was a fully T1 to Nidhogger. So T1 fighters, T1 fit, um, only T2 mods on it was the damage controls, uh, drone damage amplifiers and the, the hardeners. Yeah, some people Everything that's else not a big deal. pure T1. So he might have just been, okay, it's platinum insured. He's getting SRP for it, so you'll just log in, die, and then you can actually go and rat for the day or do something else. Yeah, so the first, actually, let's color this for, not jumps, but 24-hour kills. I think that should cover it. Some have already fallen off. Um, why didn't that change? Oh, because this was two days ago. I'm losing track of time. Yeah, no wonder yeah. there's no... Yeah, okay. My if bad. you uh, load on M2, you'd actually see the uh, graph. I think the graph on yeah, the system idea. is 40 hours. But yeah, so um, having There's, seen one of the dreadnoughts logging earlier, um, I convinced some of the pilots that were flying, and literally that's when they said they need to be in a fully stocked ship. You know, a uh, fax that only has three loads of cap charges is no use to anyone because it will run out of cap so quickly. All right, so sacrifice that ship, get into a better one. Yeah. There's take, the graph. Take the quick loss for the longer one. Yeah. Now, this isn't, it doesn't show ISK damage, so this thing otherwise would be off the charts. But uh, you can see there that's the uh, about 48 hours ago, I guessed. Yeah. Okay, so what's next? Uh, the, the next fight happens again, as we said earlier in the show. Uh, both groups are now preparing for a rematch. And uh, the message coming out of test by way of pro god legend is he basically is, is saying this is this is the most important fight we're going to have he describes why they think they won uh, which is kind of interesting he says like considering that they had advantages of uh tethering and even resupplying right because they could dock resupply and come out they didn't have the shortages that pappy did um that they were pleased that it came out basically even and they're looking forward to the next one because at that point that advantage will go away when the Keepstar blows up. So they're basically saying, this is it. This is the biggest fight that uh, you will ever be in. You should be there. And we've heard the uh, Pappy forces are consolidating. A lot of stuff's coming back from uh, coming over from test area, legacy space. Let's go ahead and look at that. And a lot of stuff's coming down from the north. Yeah, so there's with some of the resupplies and reships that have happened, um, pilots have gotten ships. I uh, believe there's a picture posted on Reddit of someone who received his replacement Ragnarok or had his spare in catch. So obviously, he needs to get from catch to delve now, which isn't an easy route. We've also had reports of fraternity's movement um, with them bringing up, to, I believe it's up to 170 Titans down yeah. from their Huge campaign number. in the north. So, um, there, there's yeah. potential of being an even larger fight now, especially as Trigger Happy might have uh, disbanded a little early, you know. Yeah, with with so many groups now having a timer, you know, having one day twenty hours to prepare is a huge amount of time in Eve life. You can literally have all your pilots go. Okay, where do we have ships? You know, uh, it doesn't matter about jump fatigue or anything like that because 
these fights are going to be so on for so long that by the time the top fight finishes, you'll have none of either. Um, quite funny, my Titan yesterday, by the time I loaded grid, I had no red timer. So I could have loaded <laughs> grid, capped up, and immediately jumped out again. But it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, now every group's been pinging. They've been telling, you know, calling up their real life friends saying, hey, you know, we've got this fight in Eve. Come on, come come back in. You know, we've seen pilots uh, such as Bad Poison who died yesterday who hasn't mm. been on a kill since 2013. They're old. So, yeah, very old player, very old Titan coming back. Saw so, so Vuk uh, get targeted. Fold. Yeah. I think we yeah, saw Buck Loud get targeted. Uh, your your buddy Hippo Jacks got uh, taken out three times, three different Titans. Yeah, but and uh, still managed to save his pod, which is the impressive side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, this was an interesting thing that we've not talked about, which was just the sheer number of players dying and then reshipping and getting right back into the fight, even though they were losing the largest, most expensive ship in the game. They just jumped in another one, and and uh, again, Hippojax died. Was it three times, or he, he, three. he died twice? Was it- he he died a total of three times. Um, every time, so uh, I raised the question very early on in the fleet. It's like, oh, I wonder where Hippojax is, and uh, he messaged his stream, and then shortly afterwards, ironically, he was targeted. Um, <laughs> through no no coincidence, I don't broadcast any target. Yeah, sure, it's a code um, word. <laughs> but then. Uh, so he came in stream, and then he mentioned in the stream chat a little while later that he was back in system. So I looked, and was like, oh, yeah, there he is. And then about 20, 30 minutes later, he got targeted. And then again, he came back in system, but didn't say anything this time. And I think he lasted slightly longer. Yeah. But then uh, I saw him in a Ragnarok, and uh, I was like, oh, cool. And then shortly a while later, I had to see his name. There was... I think he has the record for most reships into a Titan, but there were multiple pilots who also saw oh. who lost an Erebus, then a Ragnarok, then came back in a Nyx. There was um, a large amount of reshipping on both sides as well. Yeah, so the weird thing about this all is, uh, okay, you have one guy get killed more times than Sir Mole got killed in his career, right? Maybe not. I think he might have been killed six to- six different times, I think, but I heard three. So or two or three. So the point is like, and he was somebody that used them in combat when nobody else was using them. So the world's changed. These things are feel like essentially battleships might have felt in 2008, 2009, uh, or capitals. Uh, I don't know, but definitely not super capitals. Titans were not like this. Clearly we had over a thousand capitals and sorry, a thousand Titans alone in this system cycling yeah. through, which is crazy. So this- I was just looking at numbers. Uh, the total number of Titans in this fight was 1,315. So, And I, I always like find this number funny in that when Titans were originally designed, they expected a maximum of 10. Right, so 1,300 cycled through this fight. That's not all of them because a lot of no. them are, are from players who stopped playing. And so you're going to see those get purchased back in to refill the reserves. When we were talking about this fight, it was consequential. It was important. It was gigantic, but it wasn't going to turn the tide. Not this fight, maybe not the next one, maybe the third, maybe the fourth, because at some point, one group or the other will say, well, we'd rather hold on to our arsenal because if we lose it all, the other side is going to have way more firepower than we have and we won't be able to contend so it won't go all the way down to zero uh, for each side's titans but 1300 cycling through this fight that's not all the titans and only 250 died put that all into perspective it's a big fight but not that meaningful as far as degrading the other side it's a good first step both both these groups are going to have incredible war chests um the kind that if there ever was a heist this would be it like this, war, these war chests. The fact that he was just handing out multiple titans last night um, shows you just how much level of isk is invested in these alliances. So I, like well said, I don't think the next fight will be the meaningful one. I don't think the one after that. I think we're going to see a few more of these yeah. before we start reaching that critical point of alliances are unable to resupply it on reship. Right. So two, two or three, two, two or three of these, and then we'll see. 
then we'll see people start to hide theirs <laughs> and that will decrease the Titans a bit more. They're like, I think I'm going to hang on to mine because now it's starting. I'm not going to be able to get that replacement so easily. Is there a lesson that either side has learned from this fight? I mean, it's, it sounded like from one instance, there were some players who didn't come with enough supplies for, for a fight of this, of this size. I guess that's one, one lesson somebody might have learned from it. But in terms of the, the ships that were used and, and the effectiveness of, of certain ships, I mean, it didn't seem that there were too many like long-range dreads brought in or anything like that. In this, in this case, it sounded like. Um, but they could have potentially ha added to a, a DPS number or something. So the takeaways that I've seen so far from it are um, there's a finite amount of space, unfortunately, in faxes and dreads, so they can only fit a certain amount. But uh, a lot of uh, tactics that I've been using is uh, Mimitar Hauler. The, um, I can't remember when it is, but one of them has an ammo hold bonus. So they've been those stuffed with normal 3200s in ship hangers and when the t pilots run low it launches them and shoot like gets that ship killed so it can steal them back kind of thing from the wreck um but i think the kind of the funniest takeaway i've seen from this which is a, a ping that went out um to a, a coalition discord that i have access to is uh if you fly in an Erebus, you may need to go to church to pray because it probably will not live tomorrow uh, that's the main takeaway I've seen people notice is that the Erebus being the weakest tanked Titan is primate, uh, I believe it was about 40% of all Erebuses that were fielded yesterday died, which is a staggering amount for the fact that for yeah. every 10 jump in, four are dead. That's funny because I heard I heard people on the Imperium side that would come back after their Erebus had died and they'd say, what kind of, what kind of Titan did you die in? And they would say, uh, Leviathan, <laughs> you know, something else, because <laughs> they, if yeah. they're going to get comped, they wanted a different thing that wouldn't get targeted first. Yeah, what would you die in? Oh, uh, Leviathan, can you fly it? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. um, the Erebus, how much less EHP does it have than, say, a um, an Avatar? So, um. I won't compare it just to an avatar because the avatar is the tankiest. Uh, with a dual tank, the avatar can get about 60 million hit points um, with an effective dual tank and good skills. I think the Erebus gets around about 45, 50. The, um, it's around the same as a Ragnarok. You know, um, I think 50 is probably like, pushing it very much with the Phenom effects. But I think uh, it's about the same as a Ragnarok, which is about 40 million hit points. So it's not a huge amount of difference. There is just that small gap. Um, it's that small gap that is the difference between killing it with doomsdays and not because ultimately that is 10 to 15 more doomsdays per you know in terms of the tank the Elvis is the um easiest to kill so it has the lowest tank but also does generally deal the highest damage and you have the ragnarok which is again slightly more than the Erebus, but also deals slightly less damage um the Viathan dealing a lot less damage, but has a lot more tank. And then finally the Avatar. And that's just because the uh, the Avatar and the Leviathan is just because they have that one extra tank slot. So Leviathan has the eight mids and the Avatar has the eight lows that allow them to get that one more hardener, one more um, shield extender on that makes the whole world of difference in these fights. Yeah. Well, good question, Strata. You have any others? No, really. I think it's this has been a pretty comprehensive uh, discussion on on the wrap up. I'm kind of excited about, you know, what we'll be seeing next. You know, um, again, this has been a a kind of unprecedented scale of a fight in terms of we can we can talk about the the real dollar amount or that that kind of stuff, but in reality, we've never seen this many titans fighting against this many titans before. Um, and this many Titans losing um, or blowing up. So, you know, what people will cook up to to, to sway the um, the battle, um, because I feel like to some extent, this a lot of people are coming into this with a bit of theory crafting, but not as much experience as to what works and what doesn't work. We've, we've seen that a dread bomb <laughs> probably won't work and it, people will uh, probably expect it and uh, will probably, you know, lance it all the same. But again, it'd be interesting to to think about, you know, what what these people will be theorycrafting for the for the next big fight. 
you know, it did take some cycles from dread from DDs though, do, doomsdays, but uh, nothing significant they couldn't recover from. Um, you'll see an adjustment. Maybe only send in five dreads in in a fleet ball and uh, absorb some. So you know, take some cycles of firing away from the opponent. There's way so there's so many pilots here that it may not make a difference, but when it starts to get smaller or less people on the field, that kind of maneuver can can sometimes make a difference. There were a lot of things that influenced this fight that we weren't able to see. We did see the numbers come close together, far apart. Uh, they were 10, 10 Titans apart at one point, so it kind of went back and forth, uh, all because tactics are, and mistakes are being made. So there is some diversity in the fight. Okay, um, tomorrow so we're going to rest up. We're going to call it a night. We're going to rest up. Uh, we have a lot of streaming to do, possibly again. If you want more information on these fights and what's going on, check out our live stream when we do them. A lot of you that are watching us today or are watching this video might have been at our stream. We had like 1,400 people. And uh, we are constantly trying to tell you not only what's going on, but what the deeper aspects are, what this means for the war, what the war means to the games in general. But also we want to get very specific about the different things that are going on and also some of the comedy that happens uh, in these fights. What, um, what time is the armor timer or the, the structure timer tomorrow? So... I would expect fleets to start forming and becoming live in around about 22 hours from now. Um, maybe a bit sooner because there are uh, structures that need to be dealt with. Most notably, I believe Pappy is going to make an attempt on these Sana Jammers that belong to Imperium. So there will be some kind of a form up and ball, but it's going to be very interesting to see. But it, so in about 20 to 22 hours from now is when the real kind of start start of it's going to kick off and i say that, uh, that's um, midnight though for for yeah, europe so yeah right? it is. Gonna it's just going to i'm going to i'm going to have a nice little bit of a late one get a nice lane and sleep all today and become a, a us person in terms of my sleep schedule because that way i should hopefully be a bit more alive it's rough. i'm going to expect a withdrawal in the accent uh, tomorrow silly so we can uh, sell that <laughs> I, I i won't try even attempt a, to butcher an american accent <laughs> Uh, okay, we're going to go to open comms here in just a second. But before we go, a couple things. Uh, one is uh, on INN, we heard that they were saying that this war, this battle was going to, the winner of this battle was going to determine the war. Uh, that was not something we would have agreed with. Uh, as we said, this is one of the biggest fights ever. Not consequential in that sense. This is burning off the reserves. There's more reserves to burn off, a lot more. I think you need two or three of these kinds of fights before you start seeing real pain applied. Uh, so that's that. Second, um, I don't know if uh, the Imperium were saying they won this battle. I wouldn't characterize this as a win. They did well, they did even, and that's pretty good considering they're mostly and usually outgunned. But the next fight is I think going to be a lot riskier for them to take. So it will be interesting to see what their decision is. Also, because Pappy is not only reinforcing with another 170 Titans coming down, which you assume are players as well, uh, but almost all the Titans that were destroyed on the Pappy side have been replaced, a lot of them at least. And uh, the stockpiles are again coming out from the undead, right? So players that have stopped playing are logging in to sell off their Titans to their old stuff. That's happening on the Imperium side as well. So there is more stuff to go through. And uh, the last thing is that we had a huge uh, rush of generosity from players that were watching our efforts. As you know, we were streaming 13 hours. We expect to stream another 13 hours. And so I ask you now, if you haven't already, a lot of you already did, please subscribe to this channel uh, with your Prime. I think that comes as a, f a free thing or something. Yeah, and uh, so uh, Prime uh, is for free if you use uh, if you have Amazon Prime. It's something you can do every month. If you can subscribe to your favorite streamers or ones you appreciate the most, it doesn't have to be us specifically. But it is free. You literally don't pay anything more, um, and it just goes a lot to help out the channel and keep things you know keep the lights on in the place and help out. Good point. Uh, subscribe to this channel. That's what we would appreciate. But we, if you don't apply to this channel, apply it to somebody else. Don't let it go to waste. I didn't realize what it was before, but there it is. We do all this stuff for fun, for, for hobby, and because we like this game and we think you like it too. Um, but it does help out uh, when we get to experiment with um, 
new technologies and stuff like that. So thanks very much for supporting this channel. I will be starting to kind of fundraise this way because um, it helps. It does help. And uh, I appreciate it. So thank you very much for watching. We're going to send you over to Talking in Stations. Um, I'm sorry, before we do a little bit more news, we'll get into it later. I'm sorry that we haven't had enough time to talk about other news, but uh, a, a great corporation or alliance actually exp disbanded. We'll talk more about them later, but Paxton Industries, and they go way back to 2006, seven or maybe eight. They were a big part of Provi Block. They were in uh, CFC at one point. They've been around. So it's sad to see them actually fold uh, yeah. fold up. Yeah. Paxton Federation, um, they did move away from Imperium to Trigger Happy, um, but they did announce that they have been uh, they have closed up their doors. Um, I believe they're keeping their Discord server open for those that wish to stay in touch. But they they were a great bunch to fly with uh, in the CFC days, and they, like Matt said, they have been around for a very long time. They were originally Paxton Industries, but they believe reformed under Paxton Federation. So good bunch of pilots. Uh, so. Hopefully they will find themselves a nice, safe home and can even come and enjoy in on this war. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Sully. You're a champ. Strata, you too. Uh, get some sleep. You're going to need your disco nap. Uh, we will see you next time on Talking in Stations when we do a full stream probably tomorrow. And then on Sunday when we review both battles with some uh, high-end advanced players. Thanks, guys, very much. We will see you next time.